So one of the things I wanted to do is I want to show you sort of a real world application that I, I personally use uh, for Jupyter for data analysis. I, I literally have a folder in my computer called typos analysis where I like to do my analysis of student interactions with typos. And you'll see that this is a very similar structure to how I sort of uh, teach it in the class. So uh, we've been working off of the Iris data set for a few lectures now, and I happen to have a folder in my computer. Uh, I like to call it data sets. I sometimes use data. I sometimes use data sets. You get the idea of that terminology. Uh, where I do the vast majority of my programming or my analysis, uh, in this case I'm using analysis as that folder. I do like to have a folder for images, and the idea here is I'm maybe I want to save uh, my graphs uh, as I'm doing my analysis. Well, here's the folder for saving uh, those graphs. I do have some other things, and that's mostly just you know more data sets uh, going on there. But specifically, I want to go into that analysis folder. Now, once again, you see I've done a few different types of analysis. You know, usability studies with typos, uh, measuring the learning gains of students who used it. But just for our sake, I want to go off of just my everyday uh, query. Are students using typos and when? And that's exactly what I'm going into. You can see I've done this analysis a few times with a different uh, semester uh, a few times. Uh, in this case, for example, I want to look at yours. So again, this is the file that I use to know sort of what's the general activity going on inside of typos. Now I'm going to warn you, as you can see, yes, it's a lot of information and I'll even kind of increase it up just a hair so you can not have to squint at it but the entire idea and i'll just try and explain as it's going along that first little snippet that's very similar to our example video where i'm just showing you uh, some import statements and i've got a few other things you know I, i've got a little line here because once upon a time jupiter wouldn't immediately load uh, uh the matplotlib files and so this snippet you know this little trick here did that and i haven't removed it because i'm lazy and it works and don't mess with my code. Uh, you know, then just some other things, you know, when uh, certain parts of uh, say pandas or numpy or any library are being deprecated and removed or no longer developed, uh, you know, they'll show warnings. I don't wanna see those warnings. So I'm just ignoring them. Moving on. This nice little bit here, this is actually, uh, so, if you think about sort of what you're seeing here for a second, you know, take on, you know, visualize this for a second. This is the me overriding how to do that filter analysis, uh, that filter snippet that I've shown you in the previous uh, videos. So literally, this little bit here, oh, this uh, this little line here. If you might recall, uh, for doing any type of filter, that is just this in a nutshell. And I won't lie, personally, I dislike doing that. You know, I hate the fact that I gotta you know, put the data frame and then data frame again. There's like four square, but I'm lazy. I don't wanna do that stuff. So uh, this is where, this is a great example of a uh, website, you know, Stack Overflow, but specifically a technique that I, I found from that website uh, and I love. And so I very commonly use sort of this little uh, snippet. Uh, this is actually part of my setup process now uh, when I do data analysis, just because it makes it so much cleaner, uh, in my opinion. So I, I, I put it there all the time. Uh, this next little bit is just converting a string that is uh, a date into a Python date time object. And the reason why is that way I can do uh, sorting analysis. I can see whether one date happened before another. Some great things uh, with that, so I use it. This next little bit is just some um, how many weeks I wanna go back, sort of the configuration uh, setup. Uh, so literally I wanna go 16 weeks back cause it's a 16 week course. Uh, and then uh, date format, just how do I wanna visualize uh, different dates for the uh, the visualization. <clears throat> this next little bit here, this is effectively, I need to connect. Typos is a database or a web platform that is connected to a database. When you submit uh, your exercises, they are stored in the database 
for me to do analysis on. And, you know, I don't have to worry about you trying to, you know, hack in because I'm working off of uh, a local version of it. I don't like to work off of the production version. That's bad. Don't do that. If you ever hear the word production uh, in computer words, avoid trying to mess with it uh, at all costs. Always work on something we like to call development. Uh, but anyways, I'm just, I have a, a local copy uh, and this is my way of uh, connecting to my own personal computer uh, where I have the login and password uh, that are separate from the actual database, but still stored in the you know uh, environment variables on my computer. Great. And there's our course, course number 33. Uh -huh. Okay. Now this last, this next line, oh, let me run this. So I just shift enter. And there's that line. I didn't get any errors. Fantastic. But all that data is now loaded into memory. So this next little bit is just a, a giant snippet that took me, uh, you know, a couple hours to build uh, way back in the day. But effectively, what I want to do is I want to see how many students uh, completed exercises, uh, how many students looked at exercises, and what were the total number of exercises completed in a given day? Because some students like to repeat and do multiple times. So uh, all this is, is again, this is me uh, seeing how many students completed exercises. Uh, then how many students are looked at those exercises. And I'm doing some filtering. You can see uh, there's my last name. I'm, I don't want you, I don't want to impose my own names in there to fluff it up. So I don't want those. And the same kind of thing, uh, I like to do live demonstrations of everything. So uh, I have a, a demo account that I work off of. And so any demo accounts, just avoid them. And then the next little bit is I'm just type, uh, I'm going to merge those two things together. And in this case, I'm going to print it out afterwards. And this is because I want to confirm that, say, for example, uh, the course ID is uh, manipulated and changed appropriately. And it just gives me a visual indication that this code did run uh, and you can execute it. Fantastic. So we see uh, the course ID exists. Now, this line right here, I put it on its own single line because uh, what happened was uh, I, when I was kind of dusting this off, it was running into some slight problems. I hadn't messed with this code in a year, so I, I needed to kind of uh, dust it off and debug it, and I was, it was getting hung up on this line. It kept erroring. So when I was doing debugging, I sort of put it on its own line because I could then just, I knew where the problem would be. Uh, getting caused from, and I worked off of it. In this case, that three just tells me, uh, yes, this code ran and it, it executed to completion. No errors occurred. Fantastic. Now we can do analysis. That data, uh, that query, that data frame is loaded now into what I call results. Fantastic. So in our case, I am just going to do some cutoffs here that's just kind of showing me what I want to work off of and where I'm going. So there are seven days, uh, or you know, window from today to uh, literally, so uh, today to 16 weeks ago. Fantastic. So uh, I do a quick little jump through it and then I just want to do some uh, different crazy things here. So uh, those number of students, as of right now, that's just going to be a string. So I'm actually uh, going through and changing them into integers. Uh, and then, what do you know? There I go. So you can start to see uh, these are the last five records of students uh, interacting with typos. Specifically, it seems, based on this recording, we're over, oh, well, you can't see it, but uh, today is Sunday, uh, April 20th. And the last record seems to be that a student was on the 17th. The 17th was Friday. So nobody's been on typos all weekend. I'm not mad, <laughs> but it does confirm some things. So for example, tons of students are uh, using typos on Thursday when we have class. Uh, tons of students are using typos on Wednesday or Tuesday when we're having class. Not as many people looked at those exercises as uh, I would have imagined, but interesting enough. Uh, so anyways, uh, we keep on going. So again, this is just another one to then say, well, who completed, uh, how many exercises were completed in a given day? So again, it's really just the exact same approach. Uh, 
and I'm not printing it out. That's mostly just because it would be a long string. It's not doing much for me, but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to run that query uh, and then look for the past 16 weeks how many exercises were completed by students. And you can imagine it should be roughly the same. So in this case, tons of students are completing, even though if we look, uh, you know, number of viewers, there are only, roughly speaking, 84 uh, uh, students, and there are only 85 views of those exercises, but there were tons of completions. People were repeatedly completing it. So that's actually good, uh, you know, in my view. Uh, but like I said, I want to take this data, and I've done the analysis, and I want to visualize it. I want to see how it looks across 16 weeks, not just, uh, you know, five days. And so, again, I'm just going to do some quick analysis. So in this case, I'm adding in uh, a new folder, uh, or sorry, a new column. So in this case, I'm merging those two uh, data frames that I have together because they work off of the same time zone. Uh, and then I'm creating something called time zone with day. And so, as you can see, all I'm doing is I'm just applying a nice little uh, formatting approach where I get to see the day as well. And that's more just kind of visual uh, help because you know, different classes, different times, maybe you're interacting with it on uh, Wednesday, Monday, Friday, Sunday. I've seen some students get on it on Sunday. So I like to know what day, not just the date, so I don't have to look it back up. But this is how you would go about doing that. Uh, in this case, you can see uh, I'm calling it uh, time zone with day. I take the results from the time zone, and then I'm going to apply some function to it. In this case, this. Uh, so this is uh, something known as lambda calculus. It's not something we're going to do in this class, but you know, just to explain it a little bit. Uh, so this says for each row, whatever the element in the row is, do this thing. And as you can see, uh, so date time, uh, transform that string into a date. So take your, your, your date and then uh, convert it to this date format that we are showing, plus the actual day, you know, the day name uh, shorthand. So that's what it's doing. And then I'm just doing a, a tail on that. So the last little bit here is now uh, just some quick little, it looks like, uh, what am I doing here? Oh, let me run it and see. So I'm just doing some formatting of my data. So uh, as you can see, I'm masking uh, exercises. So show me time zones or uh, mask the time zones for a particular uh, day. So I'm not seeing everything. I'm just seeing uh, certain ones uh, from a particular interval, a little a window, if you will, uh, the start to the end. Uh, let's see. Uh, if that length is more, if it's equal to zero, uh, what I'm doing here is effectively if nobody went on a particular day, it took me a second to think through this, but if nobody went on to typos for a particular day, I still want that day to exist. So in that case, uh, create that record, effectively create a record for that day where nobody visited, looked at, completed a typos exercise. See, no usage that day. Uh, and then I'm doing a quick little sneak where once I've added in all of these new days, uh, I'm resorting my results so that those days uh, flow correctly in a sequential manner. And now what we're getting into is literally the plotting approach. And there's a lot going on here. Again, I want, I'm, I'm doing uh, three columns for every day. So you can see I'm doing some quick formatting. Uh, so I'm creating uh, some subplots. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm using that axis one. So there are three rectangles that I want to work off of specifically uh, and how they kind of appear and what's their results. Uh, then I'm adding some labels. These are mostly just uh, my way of kind of creating some extra visualizations. So say, for example, the Y axis uh, label is going to be the frequency. Uh, the title is going to be number of students that completed or viewed exercises. Uh, and then my indices are some, or sorry, my tick marks for the x-axis are some set of indices that is specified by the number of days. And I don't want to see all of them. I just want to see a subset. 
So again, uh, just some other little bits going on here. So say, for example, there's the legend, uh, the y-axis, so I'm only seeing a zero, I'm not getting into negatives. Uh, that's more visual, you know, stop at zero. Uh, tick marks, uh, in this case, this is how I'm setting the rotation. So here's the tick labels, here's rotate that data 45 degrees, and uh, let it be right aligned. Uh, that just kind of helps with visuals uh, going on there. And then some other little pieces where I'm auto labeling that data. Uh, that's not something I'm going to be working off of or visualizing here. As you can see, I've commented that out, but I just showed numbers uh, atop each one of the uh, days. So let's see how this all kind of comes together. As you can see, I've run through each part of these exercises and this last little thing. And so this is literally a visualization of all of uh, the student activity through typos. And yeah, a lot of it I can get. Uh, so uh, our course typos was a required uh, exercise. So I see a lot of students, you know, this kind of window in between. So that's most likely a Tuesday. That's not. Uh, that's most likely a Wednesday. That's most likely a Thursday. Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Tuesday Wednesday, Thursday. And you can see, oh, well, what do you know? We happen to have uh, a nice little probably vacation going on in February, uh, you know, roughly around that time. So February 20th, uh, we probably did not have class for some odd reason. I, I'd have to double check. Uh, but interestingly enough, you know, if you go to say something like uh, March, or the beginning of March, there was a huge uptick, or that's actually a Thursday, or a little odd uptick. There wasn't as much activity going on there, uh, but students that looked at the exercises. I think there was a mistake there. I think that was uh, the get weather data where you literally couldn't complete it. Um, but then you see the nice little trough of spring break and some students kind of got on a little bit. Uh, someone did, uh, but I, what do you know? You didn't get on an academic website during spring break. Yeah, uh, but then you can see I can see some more behavior and apparently like some student kind of hopped on uh, over the weekend at one point and just looked around. Uh, so I can see this activity and this uh, behavior uh, based on this visualization. And again, this is what I use uh, Jupiter 4 on a semester by semester basis. And uh, I have other instructors who are uh, using typos in their courses. And this is how I can show uh, them how their students are using typos during the class.